Welcome to the weekly art show provided by the galleries of Granbury Square. I am Cynthia James with Artifacts, one of the galleries that exhibit art daily. The galleries are Artifacts, Lake Granbury Art Association, Langdon Cultural and Educational Center, and your private collection. We hope you enjoy this program whose purpose is to let you know what is currently on display. It is also about education since we also feature artists demonstrating their medium. Beside this show, we have special art shows and every month have last Saturday gallery night. That night we are open until 9 p.m. and have special activities and receptions. Hope to see you there this next month. Please go with me now to our first gallery. Our next segment features your private collection art gallery. This is an exciting art gallery featuring the art of over 30 Texas artists. Stacy Watkins, owner and featured artist, uses mixed mediums of fused glass, metal painting, resin to create her works of fantasy. Per Southern Living Magazine, this new medium is a must-see. In our art shows, you will also view the gallery's many other top artists creating their original one-of-a-kind artworks. Artists like Aaron Tate's Blown Glass, metal artist Terry Jones, one of U.S.'s top watercolorist, Soon Young Warren, Woman of the West artist, Char Sharon Markwart, and Polly Giselle and her hand-carved glass. Hi, I'm Stacy Watkins, and I'm here at your private collection art gallery. And this month, we're featuring Bob Cook, who is a wonderful artist that we are so blessed to have. His paintings can be seen all over the world and well nationally and internationally all of our books and magazines he's won all kinds of awards and Bob is going to tell us a little bit about his paintings he does very detailed work in watercolor yeah I try to do some of these are some of my paintings here I try to do real life subjects of things that I find out in nature and like this little this little building right down here with the old truck was uh, out west of Lipan, sitting out in the feet of the truck was. But I took the truck off of one place I found in the old house, which was all the wind had peeled the roof off. So try to get really fine detail on that. Uh, this is a house right south of Benbrook that I've been driving by about 50 times. And I said, I've got to paint that house. So what I did is I put Comanche Peak behind the house and put the house in and then put a river in here and reflected the house in the river and kind of so it looked like a Brazos River scene. So it's kind of made up, but there are real subjects in there that I try to make pretty accurate. So it's called Bend of the River. Uh, this is one of my scenes that I, I did in France that uh, is in a little town called Morand. We ate dinner there in this hotel who was a friend of the guy we were staying with in France. And so I went outside while they were ordering, and the sun had gone down, and the lights were on the cars coming around the corner. So it, it just it means a lot to me because I was there, and I know that scene, and these guys were standing out in front uh, talking, and a little character of those people. I had a couple, a couple of the lights on the O and the T in hotel were burnt out. Oh. So I kept them dark. <laughs> so I try to get, you know, do some really realistic stuff. The, uh, this, is, this is my award-winning painting that I did. This is my award-winning painting that I just received the best of show at the Stars of Texas exhibit. And uh, it will also be in the Rio Brazos to get accepted for the Rio Brazos show, which is an international uh, juried show here in Granbury. So I was kind of proud of it. it. It was a lot of work, a lot of detail involved in it. It took me a couple of weeks to paint that one. Normally, I, I, I don't take a lot of time to paint these. Normally, these take three or four days to do, uh, maybe four days or something like this. But this one, with all the crammed in detail of all these buildings, all the wrought iron railings that New Orleans is known for, and the architecture, the French architecture, which I love, and the people, and the hot dog stands, and the atmosphere, and the 
the wet streets where it just rained and the sun was going down so I didn't have any sunlight on it but so I tried to capture that in the and the the main thing about this I was trying to get was the uh, neon lights of all the signs up and down Bourbon Street coming on and it's hard to do you can't use any white paint when you do watercolor so that's the white board all the white on there is the white board showing through so come over to my studio and I'll kind of show you a little bit over there kind of how I do it and uh, it might be interesting all right well wonderful we'll we'll have Bob's paintings here for hopefully for the duration of the time that we're open and they're a wonderful addition to your collection at your private collection art gallery here on the square yeah. at Granbury I only have one thing to say this is the only gallery in the United States that I'm in and it's the only one I want to be in Stacy's treated me really great and we've sold a bunch of work and it's my hometown now I'm originally from Kansas City Missouri and can't move down to Dallas and then over here to Granbury so this I love this town it's the neatest town in the world come down on the square make sure you come into your private collection and look at my work I'll change out stuff there'll be new stuff coming and going all the time I've been drawing and painting all my life I uh, was a kid uh, delivered newspapers when I was 12 years old in Kansas City Missouri and down in the on Baltimore Avenue I used to deliver a newspaper to every office and all the buildings up and down Baltimore on Saturday mornings well in the middle of my delivery there was a place called Sheffer Studios and Jewel Sheffer had a retouching art studio there and uh, I used to stop by and my eyes would just get like silver dollars watching these guys paint with an airbrush. I was a gopher for the studio. Anything they needed done I did and so I learned from the ground up how they did particular things and they had gotten in out of airbrushing photographs for the newspapers what they did to architectural renderings. Architectural renderings are, are where you paint a picture of a building before they built it for the architect, for the developer, for the owner, whoever. But uh, we decided to get into that business as I came into it. Uh, we started developing techniques on how to paint various structures, otherwise how to paint the brick, how to paint the roofs, how to paint shingle roofs, how to paint metal roofs, how to paint uh, granite, marble, techniques in paint for all of those materials so that we could duplicate the materials they're going to put on those actual buildings. When I do a, uh, a drawing or a photograph, uh, I keep all in a drawer down here I've got and on, on the computer. There's a photograph of a little church I thought was really neat. This is in Cuevo, New Mexico, off the side of the road. It was empty, nobody there. This whole little town around this little place was desolate. Uh, and so I took over. I, mean, <laughs> I started going into buildings and photographing them inside. All these little old shacks back in here are just really neat. I've got a bunch of shots of those. And it's out in the middle of nowhere. No one would ever find it. So I took this photograph basically decided to draw it up so what I did is I did a drawing I did it did it on uh, I basically overlaid part of the building make sure the perspective was correct and drew the trees in where I'm going to want them changed from that this is just for color and ideas and then transferred it onto this piece of paper this paper is I wet in the bathtub Till it soaks up completely and then I set the paper down on this piece of board and then take a stapler like this I don't know half a stapler and just go around and staple the paper while it's soaking wet all the way around the outside if I'm gonna frisk it like I'm doing here this is called frisketing if I'm gonna frisk it the building off or cover the building up mask it off from the background then I'm going to use a kind of transfer paper that 
the rubber cement that I used to put this frisker down doesn't pull the lines back off again when I clean it up. This is basically a real thin, real thin, uh, the best example is butcher paper that you uh, wrap your, you get wrapped, your, your meat's wrapped in, in the, uh, at the supermarket. This is enough to last me for 10 years. It's, this is so much on here, this would wind up for half a mile. It's so thin that uh, I'll lay a piece of that down. I just get like an old piece of mat board like this. I'll lay a piece of that frisket down, tape it on the corners, paint it with this. This is rubber cement and thinner. And this is an airtight rubber cement can. That very few people have these. <laughs> <laughs> these are I, I've had this for it 40, like you have. 40 <laughs> years. But well, this is full of rubber cement and thinner and you make the consistency real thin. And then you just basically with your paintbrush just paint the rubber cement right over that frisket material till it dries. Then you take the same thing and you paint right over your watercolor paper with the same with the same rubber cement thinner combination. Mm -hmm. Then what you do is you can imagine if the paper was on here or was on taped on here, you basically take that paper, turn it upside down, take that paper and pull it back down onto there, push it down so it stays peel the tape off and peel it up and you get a piece of that frisket over the whole thing stuck together with the contact of the two rubber cements, one on the paper, one on the frisket. Decent. Then I can cut out all around the building with a razor blade, just use a plain single edge razor blade, cut around the outside edge, pull off the part you're not using and then with a rubber cement pickup, which is one of these, these mm -hmm. little things, I've got a bunch of them, these have been used for, these will last for a hundred years. You just go there and it, it pulls the rubber cement right off of everything. So whenever you put that, the frisket down, do you have to, you have to be real careful with air bubbles or anything? Whenever yeah, you're... well see the one of the, one of the, one of the things about this tissue is it's uh -huh. shrink wrap. Hey. So, what I do is just take my hair dryer, hair dryer here, see. Very smart. and when, uh -huh. if it's all wrinkled, which it was, yeah. uh -huh. it was all wrinkly. Uh -huh. So I take a hair dryer, heat it on there as I'm rubbing, and I rub with a Never. tissue like this mm -hmm. to rub it down, and hit it with this hair dryer at the same time, and all the bubbles go out. It's just smooth as heck all the time. Nice. This one is a street scene in Toulouse, France. And this is the main old street. This is the greatest looking street you've ever seen. <laughs> it's got more stuff going on than you can shake a stick at. Uh, there's techniques to do all these little building details. Some of them are kind of abstractly done, believe it or not, although it looks real now. And the idea here was to get this sun to shoot across the street with the, this building shadowing onto the street and then the cars and these little people are merging out of the shadows into the light. And this, old, this is a real famous hotel, the Beaux Hotel there. And it's on this corner. There's newspaper stands out here. There's all kinds of stuff going on. This was a long time painting too for Come me. On. This took a couple of weeks to do, to do this one. So there's lots of different techniques I use. Recently, I won Best in Show at the Stars of Texas show this year. Uh, I, it's the same prize I won two years ago. I won Best in Show at the same show. It's a big show put on every year uh, down in Brownwood. Uh, there was three, four hundred entries in that show. And then recently I have uh, won first in watercolor at the Lake Granberry Art Association, of which I'm a member. and. Uh, for a, a, one of my New Orleans paintings, a small one I did. And then recently, uh, just a couple of days ago, I found out that I'm 
have, two of my paintings have been accepted for international shows and uh, we'll see if I win anything. I have to wait a month or so to find out if I won anything in those shows. So one is the the Society of Watercolor Artists in Fort Worth, which is a big show. It'll be at the uh, library up there, uh, Fort Worth Library, starting first of next month. So get up there and take a look at that. In the meantime, go into your private collection, take a look at my paintings, see what you think. If you like them, buy them. Uh, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome once again to the Dora Lee Langdon Center. I'm Joel Back, the program coordinator here, and I'd like to welcome you to this month's show featuring the artwork of our National Rio Brazos Art Exhibition. The Rio Brazos is an annual national show that comes up once a year, uh, usually in October. Now we're going to do it in the spring, and that will run April 14th through the 28th. Uh, come on down to see a bunch of regional artists, local artists, and even some national artists putting in their best works that were juried in by our juror, Devin Nowlin, out of Fort Worth. And don't forget to join us midway through the run of the Rio Brazos on Sunday, the 21st, from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. out on the lawn for our annual Concert on the Lawn featuring the bands of Tarleton State University. We love showing off the kids to Granbury once a year, so come on out, support the kids, and enjoy some great music. And be sure to mark your calendars for the annual Granberry Wine Walk coming up on April 26th and 27th, Friday and Saturday from noon to 8 both days. There are 17 local and regional wineries coming to participate along with regional cheeses, artisan meats, arts and crafts, and everything in between. Tickets are available at GranberryWineWalk.com or from some local vendors. The images you are seeing now are all accepted works into this year's Rio Brazos show featuring 50 works by 50 different artists, local, regional, and national artists. We have a variety of work including photography, sculpture, watercolor, oil, acrylics, and everything in between. So come on down to, for our normal hours. My name is Cynthia James and I'm artist owner of Artifacts and our wine walk is coming up in about a month. I'll give you the dates later so you'll remember them. But it's spring now. The pelicans are out, the seagulls are singing, and birds are flying overhead and every day I get to work out in my shop is a fabulous day. Uh, the last two weeks uh, Barbara Preslow and I have done nothing but clean this room up. Probably can't tell but it's gone through, it goes through a winter where everything gets stored in here because in the winter time I work in the house with all the jewelry. In the spring, summer, and fall, oh my gosh, I get to work outside, the sun is shining, as I said, the birds are singing, and then people start coming and visiting us from the lake. So we've cleaned it all up. I'm getting ready for the wine walk and this year I've decided that um, I'm really going to do a lot with wine and a lot with recycling. My crushed glass has been a tremendous hit so I'm going to be working on some more of that but right now I'm going to be experimenting with wine bottles. Great, great, great. We have the wineries so lots of recycled glass, absolutely fabulous bottles of all type and the first thing that I have to do is experiment. Not ever having really done very much of this, um, I really have to learn how my kiln is going to react, how the molds are going to work, and then I've got to learn how do I go and make something that's different than anybody else. At first the things I'll make will be a little bit more 
uh, standard things that we may have seen before but then I'm going to try to figure out how to do my twist so in order to do some of these things um, I'm going to use the molds that I've gathered over the years and we'll we'll be getting a close-up of these uh, somewhere throughout the show but right in front of me are all the molds so first you have to find the molds that you want uh, and I'm telling you a little bit about this because we think about the art and it's on the wall or in front of us, but there's really actually a lot of work that goes into this. So as I said, you have to find the molds you like, the shapes that you like, try to find molds that are different than anybody else or how you're going to use them differently than anybody else. And then you have to mail them to you and then clean them up. And then you have to apply kiln wash. So what we worked on yesterday was the kiln wash and there's my bowl and I I'm all cleaned up ready to go to the work ready to go to work so I'm gonna try not to get my hands dirty so you can see here this is the kiln wash and this one is for glass and it's actually a really thin one and it's actually not set up a lot of the times this kiln wash sets up uh, so quickly that every time you go to use it you have to um, really rework it the whole way is that that right there so in general you're going to read your instructions on the kiln wash this one was one part the powder and four parts water um, it wasn't quite thick enough for the way that I wanted it so uh, we worked it and added a little bit more of the powder got it to a really good spot and then you have to um, uh, Oh shoot, I've forgotten the word. What can I imagine? Strain it. There we go. There we go. So I strain it back and forth until it's just a silky, silky um, uh, liquid. And I wanted to show you this. Couldn't find a spoon. Didn't want to go in the house. And I learned in high school that creativity is finding the tool that's around you. And this one worked really well as a spoon yesterday. Um, here is a Japanese style wide brush so the bristles come out and they go into um, onto the molds and what it will even though they will burn out to a certain extent you will have little rough spots and you don't want that you want your mold to be absolutely as smooth as possible so yesterday after we got through um, putting all the kiln wash on them and several two, three, four layers depending on how thick the solution is. Uh, once they were all dry then I actually came back with a soft cloth and I just smoothed and smoothed and smoothed because you will get with using the brush a lot of lumps and bubbles and they all show up on the back side and I believe that your front and back need to be as beautiful as possible though the back sometimes will have a little bit of imperfections. So you can see here I have all different sizes of of molds each one doing a little bit more of a shallow bowl a little bit of a deeper bowl um, this one right here and some of these we will show you as a close-up um, some of these uh, you will actually put bits and pieces of glass in some of them are going to make uh, a lamp some of them are going to be as I showed for the wine bottle as you can see here and in this particular case I've only used it twice this was my first one and you can see it slumped beautifully the back is beautiful I was very very pleased with this one and so here we just have a small uh, dip tray or uh, I'm sure we will come a spoon holder a thousand different things to use this for uh, the next time I fired it because I'm all about experimentation as you well know this one I've actually added frit to the bottom of it in the same color green Theoretically, this glass is incompatible with the wine bottles. However, since it's not structural, I'm using this as just a detail. So we're going to explore more and more with this, with different patterns, uh, with different amounts, determine whether we like it in here in terms of cleaning, because some of these are going to be a lot more practical than I normally make. This isn't just about texture. Um, one of the ways that the recycling happened for me was my son is an avid Coca-Cola lover and when he 
he's told me that when he moves into his house, he wants a sculpture from me out of Coca-Cola bottles. So he started handing off Coca-Cola bottles with me and I started trying to make a sculpture and they kept breaking and not really working out. So part of this is also going to be getting my son a sculpture out of Coca-Cola bottles. But I also used to have a boss, Jim Patterson, at the Jewelers Workshop that collects Dr. Pepper. So I'm also going to do some things for Dr. Pepper so that uh, he might get a gift or two. Now you can see here that these are melted a little bit differently. So again, a lot of this exper is experimenting. Do I really like it this way? Do I want it to really drop down? Or do I want it to be as flat as this? Because now I know how what temperature to get this is to be super flat. At this particular time, I didn't know that. So I'm still working on that. Uh, I also wanted to show that you can get a lot of textures on this and in this particular case I've bought one and I'm pretty sure that down the line I will actually be able to design and do the artwork and a mold company will actually make this pattern for me so then I will be totally unique because I will have my own pattern and you may be able to see that this is actually very textural and I am going to put a, I guess I'm actually going to do this. One, I'm going to clean all the paper and everything off. Divine Wines. This will sit on here. It will go to a full fuse and this texture will actually be on here. And now you can see over here, I have actually taken some glass where I've melted it for two times. And, or two thicknesses, excuse me, two thicknesses. So this is a drape mold. This one it's going to actually slump down over it. So it would be very similar to my taking this and this will fall but even drape even more. And these right here, these were coasters that I did and for whatever reason something, and it's been a while since I did these, something went wrong. I tried to fire them again. I still wasn't real crazy about them. Um, now that I look at them, I'm kind of like, well, what is wrong with them? But I think I'm going to turn these into just some little shallow dishes. Um, I, like many others, like to have little dishes all around different places. Just love them, what can I say? So I'm going to make a number of those as well. Um, and then finally, this doesn't have to do specifically with this round, but I also wanted you to see that you can also uh, make very small ones. And these are going to be earrings, pendants, and sometimes I use these when they don't actually match. Uh, I'll actually use these in sculptures. And so because I've got the kiln wash, the glass didn't, uh, didn't stick, and these are just small and delicate. If they match, fabulous. If they don't, they become art. And a little tip on doing this, you can see here, if you can, I've used some very large frit. I've put it in here and one of the tricks that I've learned is you start the frit just a little bit or you end the frit a little bit below the outer edge and dome it in the center and then they don't get caught around the edges with sharp spots. And then I fire this at about 1500 to 1510 degrees and it gives this beautiful round curve. And I think these are going to be absolutely gorgeous small earrings. Now I want to show you just a couple of other things. So you've seen me cut these, you've seen me design these. This is actually going to go in a mold and is going to be absolutely it's going to be absolutely spectacular and I love making these and I did show you what happened with the corners one time so I'm going to show you a little bit more about that so this is going to go into my round large uh, Lord large uh, mold I'll just set that over there and yes it will be okay it's not that breakable um, when you saw me making the the large ones that were more asymmetrical and we'll have to get a close-up in just a moment um, I they have been such a hit such a success and I absolutely love them when I did the circles it was all about how do I do something within the confinements of that circle I'm really not a confined kind of person so I started doing though the others that were so asymmetrical and after I started looking them I kept thinking why can't I do them in a very small small bowl 
why does it have to be so big? So if you can see here, right here, last night, oops, I've already moved it, last night I sat and spent, you know, half an hour, two hours coming back and forth designing this and deciding do I like this this way. I'm using broken bits of glass that I have as leftovers, trimming, cutting them, moving, shifting them until I get the pattern and I'm actually, I actually have a concept at what temperature and what type of glass I'm using so that as that glass starts to melt, I can envision how far it's going to drop, how it's going to pull and shift. Absolutely fabulous. So I now need to take a little bit of a close-up look, so just another minute. You can see here uh, is what I was talking about in terms of layering the glass. So I've got a deep valley that's fairly close to the bottom, and in this case I actually found a piece that had already been fired and had broken off on something and I decided that it looked like a pool of water. So right now you can see how it is all on top and just going to drop down and drop down and drop down. These bowls are absolutely stunning. And so I just wanted you to have a little bit more of a close-up and now we're going to look at a finished product. So here is this gorgeous, gorgeous bowl. I absolutely love it. I'm going to just move it around so that you can see all the colors that are going to come. Oh my gosh, I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. And I already know that the one in the kiln is going to turn out beautifully as well. I want to invite you uh, Friday and Saturday, April 26th and 27th, to the wine, to Granberry's Wine Walk. And all the things that you've seen in, in my shop, uh, though you haven't seen much because I'm keeping it a secret. All of the pieces that I'm making are going to be there. So please come and enjoy and enjoy art. Thanks. Everybody. Welcome to Granberry Theatre Company. We are here with the lovely Elise Tekentine and we are standing by our new sign for the Gallery of Granberry Theatre Company, Gallery at Granberry Theatre Company, which is located here on the square at the old Granberry Live facility. Last time we came to you, we were talking about this new gallery that we were putting together and it has happened. It has happened! We made, and because of the lovely Elise and all of her talents and creativity, this thing has come about. We've got a whole bunch of artists that are in the space. Nine, we started with nine some. I think there are 12 now. And now we have 12. Today what we'd like to do is we'd like to give you a little bit of a tour of the facility that we've put together. Um, we won't get to all the artists today because there are 12 of them, but we're gonna kind of try to get as many as we can today. There's some lovely artwork here and we want to show you what we've been doing. So we're kind of excited. So oh, welcome again. Oh, thank you, very excited. Um, I have focused on uh, Granberry Talent, um, there will be a few more other regional artists who will join us later on during the summer, but for now the focus is all on Granberry people who will live and work here. Um, there are so many talented people in Granberry that people haven't been introduced to yet, so come this way and let me show you. Let's take you. a tour. This is Cindy Bell. She works in digital collage. I love her work. It's kind of surreal and very, very well done. This is Jane Conkling. Jane has only been painting for three years. Her work is very, very Mexican folk art inspired. I love Jane's strong women. They're incredible. How long has uh, Jane been working in the industry? Is she? Um, her brother um, was really well known in Texas, uh, Tyler Beard. And Jane comes from a really, really creative background. Mm. Um, she has a long line of very talented people in her family. Uh, but Jane is only sort of recently painting herself, and she is an award-winning artist and somebody I'm very happy to call my friend. Beautiful. Some yes. of these, uh, it's so gorgeous. Incredible. She's got very strong women characters yes. inside yep. of these things. Yep. And then there's a, a motif. I see some skeletons in there, which I yeah, love. Yeah, well, you know, she's painted through a lot of um, health and emotional pain, as a lot of artists do. Um, she had lots of death in her family. 
when she came to Granberry and she painted through it. She picked up her brush. She asked to be showed something to fill her heart and mind with something peaceful and joyful. Mm -hmm. And she started painting. And I think she's made incredible progress with only three years experience. Um, she self-taught completely. That's incredible. It is incredible. And she's a great artist and a lovely person. You can see that there's art inside the family. It runs yes. deep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's no lack of creativity there. Tell me about the framing process. She, she when somebody puts a piece of art together like this, do they they decide the framing process, or yeah. when you put the gallery together, do you decide what it's going no, to be? No, I don't decide that. I, I've helped um, decide a few things with artists needed help with framing um, because to me that's part of the whole picture. The frame can neither be a hindrance or a beautiful thing to add to the art. Sometimes it's better just to be gallery wrapped. Um, Jane's pieces I think are stunning in these primitive um, frames that her husband makes with old sh shiplap siding from mm, houses. Yeah. Um, to me they add to the folkloric character of these works and I'm, I just love them. I, I mean I, I'm a huge fan of old Peely paint. It, you can't fake that. Mm -mm. And so when she started framing her works in these, I was all over that. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, our next artist down here is Kari Bishop. Um, she is a photographer and an artist of lots of things. She also makes very cool jewelry. But I really love um, Kari's photographic work, and she lives in Granbury. This is uh, my friend Cindy Cook, who is a lovely person who lives on an amazing farm in Bluffdale. And Cindy walks her fence line every day and photographs the beauty in her, her pasture and her world. And we get to be a very, very um, lucky to see some of these really, really personal and intimate works of hers. Um, I love this one. She has had this printed in some kind of sepia tone. Cindy also utilizes found materials in her framing. Mm. And, and I love that. Just really, really love that. Nice, very rusticated. It is. I, I, I like Cindy. She's a great, she's a really great girl. Um, this is Kathy Quest. Kathy works in acrylic and mixed media. Um, she often works from a very, very spiritual place. Um, this is her Face of Christ, where she is best known for. Um, Kathy is an award-winning artist. She is trained in um, art at Texas Tech. And so Kathy is an, um, amazing. I love her abstracts. This one, actually, you can see some spiritual elements. Yeah. The hearts as well. I, I really love Kathy. She's an amazing, talented person. She's a local. And she's very centered. Oh, yes, definitely from Granbury. She moved here in 2001 when she and her husband retired from the Lubbock area. Mm. And um, just a wonderful person, a constant calm and one of my really great friends. I'm crazy about her. Currently in the gallery right now, Elise, is this mostly local artists right all, now? These all, are all local artists. All Granberry people. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Right? And this but, is just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> there are so many that will be hanging during the summer. There'll be one or two from other areas because I have friends that are doing cool things all over the state. But I wanted to stick with Granberry artists, especially people who are not represented other places, because you can't even begin to imagine the people doing some of the coolest things here. Mm. I'm always amazed. And, and the coolest thing is I know most of them. Yeah. And, I, and I appreciate the opportunity to show what they oh, do, yeah. to, to present their work to other people. It just, it just thrills me to death. Well, coming I just from love the outside, it. it really is a vibrant arts, arts community yes, that exists here. Yes. And it's really unique to see so much talent in such a small area. Why? Yes. Why do you think it's know. like that? I don't know. I guess, you know what, maybe a lot of artists tend to gravitate to places where there can be quiet, where you can have studio space that's not super expensive, where you can find a lot of inspiration in the quiet and solitude. Um, I create in chaos, but a lot of people like to have a very serene environment. I know that's true for Kathy, mm. for Cindy, and for Jane. They have to create in a peaceful and serene environment. And so I think maybe artists tend to group in a smaller community yeah. where they can create quietly and expensively and happily. I don't know why. <laughs> hey, that, sounds, that sounds good to me. That makes sense, right? Yeah, I would like to have an explanation for that. But I think overall what I'm seeing, I got two phone calls yesterday. Um, 
I, I heard about the gallery. I'm a photographer here locally. Can I come and show you what I'm doing? It's, it's amazing to me. So we've only just begun. There are so many people who are looking for um, an accessible and happy place to show their new work. Uh, and it just makes me over the moon. Well, it we're makes lucky, me over right? the moon. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, I had no idea. <laughs> it's amazing. No idea. Um, this is, oh, I'll see if I can get out of the picture. These two works are by Mila Weber. Mila is originally from Russia, and you can see some of her Russian yeah, you can. influence in the architecture in her pieces. I love Mila's work. It is so naive and happy and joyous. The colors are incredible. The other day when I was sitting in the gallery, I noticed that she had gold highlights, and that just bounced the light right off the work. And so from every angle, I love what she's doing. It really, really great work. Emile is a very nice lady. I, mean, I haven't had the chance to work with her very much as we've just met, but I, I really love what she's doing. This is another one of Cindy Bell's pieces, um, Digital Collage. Uh, that is a dog that she used to own. That mm. uh, She combines collage technique on computer to come up with these really surreal and humorous, witty, inspiring, um, views into her mind. I, I love Cindy's work and she's been a dear friend for a very long time. Um, this is Ty Harper. Ty is uh, a lovely friend of mine and neighbor who I've known for a very, very long time. Our children grew up together. And Ty is a working artist in the fact that he paints when he's not at his other job, <laughs> as most artists do. Mm -hmm. But Ty is incredibly talented. And when I bugged him and bugged him for the last few years to please do something, please get busy, please be painting, because I know he's one of the most talented people I know. And when he came up to hang these, he said, well, I just had these in the closet. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> these are old things I had in the closet and my mouth dropped open. Uh, I, I love this. We all love, love this piece. This is a very popular piece in oh, the gallery. Yeah. And people oh, yeah. are really taking this gonna, one. Somebody's, somebody's gonna, gonna buy that piece that. very soon. <laughs> Very popular piece. I love it too. I just love it. It it speaks to me on so many levels, mm. and I and I love Ty, and I'm so happy to have him here. He's a dear friend and neighbor. Uh, that's one of my wacky assemblage pieces. I love for things to be lit. Mm. A couple more of Kari Bishop's photographic works. I love the praying mantis. It's those oh, are it's the coolest yeah, pets on right. the planet, and I'm a huge fan of her technique. Uh, she's a really neat girl, and a uh, a great supporter of the arts as well. And then this is uh, another piece of Kathy's abstract. Uh, mm -hmm. These are her cogs. Oh. I love these. Uh, here is another piece of ties yep. um, called Blue Man. And I think as artists, we all have those blue periods. Sure. Um, sometimes you learn to work through those, you know, and really cool work comes out of that. Sometimes you don't. <laughs> I think Ty was incredibly successful with this piece, and I absolutely love it. That's a beautiful piece. Yes. This is another of Ty's pieces called Fish on a Plate. Love that this um, cubism sort of thing mm -hmm. abstracted fish on a plate. This is uh, Ben Tabor. One of my favorite pieces absolute, here, too. Absolute love this. Oh. Ben is a young artist working in Granberry. Um, he has studied away and is home again. And um, he graduated from school too, I don't know where, um, but he is the same age as my children and look at his work. Mm -hmm. He's an amazing, accomplished artist at such a young age. Uh, we have several other of Ben's things that we'll cover in the next segment here. Um, another of Kathy's, another of Kathy's fun put together collage pieces. And that's about it.